All right, the votes have been cast. It is time for us to narrow this playing field down from 32 to 16. Let's get started. So again, March Madness, Productivity Madness, is just a fun way to introduce you to the organized 365 products and for me to get, get to share with you how they got created. You guys, I'm a teacher. So I've just created all these different products that I would in my classroom in order to teach the skill of organizing. We're gonna start in the first bracket, which is the Sunday basket bracket. Would you look at this? Would you look at this? Half of the portable Sunday baskets have come out in support of their portable Sunday basket because she is in the fight of her life. She is in a fight against the slash pockets. Over here, the teacher work box, the happy apple is right here, standing right beside her. She's gonna be in the um, third category that we're gonna go through. And all of the invisible work for teachers is back here supporting her in the stands. Everyone is a winner here at Organize 365. All of these products are winners, but we do have to have a little bit of fun competition here to figure out what is the number one productivity tool that Organize 365 has. It's a nail biter, like it, it was hard. Many people said they did not know how to fill this out and some people said, Lisa, you used to have the podcast on here. You forgot to have the podcast. I totally forgot. It's so invisible, I didn't even see it. So uh, I will let you know, we've got two big upsets today, two big upsets. So let's get started. In the first category, we have the complete Sunday basket. She won last time that we did this a couple of years ago. She decided to come this time in her new raspberry embrace color. Embrace, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Embrace is the conference that I did live for five years in a row. It's on hiatus right now. You could get it on demand, but we're not doing it live until I'm done with my PhD. So this is the color of dreaming and possibility and vision and your uniqueness and you. So she decided to come to the center court today in her raspberry embrace color. And she is going up against the productivity products that save my life every single day. Um, this nice little notepad, line notepad, I love to make like a daily or weekly to-do list on there. I use our little individual notepads all the time or index cards, anything that will get information out of my brain and onto paper so I can put it in the Sunday basket or put it in one of my Friday work boxes. And then we have the productivity tabs, the original productivity tabs and the new ones that were introduced this year. So we have all of the, the different colors. I use the productivity tabs to label my slash pockets because I'm never near my label maker, if you know what I mean. Now the productivity products, they knew like, Really? They're like, really? We drew the short straw. We have to go up against the Sunday basket in round one. Like, we know we're powerful. We know that we reduce the overwhelm by getting information out of your head so you can think about what you're supposed to be thinking about. But are, you, are you kidding me? Like, we have to go up against the OG Sunday basket? This really wasn't much of a game. Um, we're just going to go ahead and put the productivity products right inside of the Sunday basket because that's where they belong. And the Sunday basket is going to move on to the next round. Now, all of us are different kinds of learners. So our second game is around Sunday Basket supports. So the Sunday Basket comes with the Sunday Basket Club. Yes, you and 10,000 other people will be in this group and be able to ask your questions. People in the group will answer your questions. Professional organizers will answer your questions. There's organized 365 education staff inside of that group. And they meet live 90 minutes on Sunday, almost every Sunday, about 40 Sundays out of the week, out of the year they will meet and walk through your Sunday basket with you. That's the Sunday basket club. It's included in the Sunday basket purchase. So maybe it's not really fair to put it on its own inside of the bracket. And we put that against the Sunday basket class. Well, the Sunday basket class is optional. And as a teacher, I told you I'm a teacher. I know that people learn differently. And sometimes like you can read the workbook, you can watch the course, you could be in the big group program, but you're like, yeah, but what about me? What about my house, my situation, my everyday life, like how can I, are my labels right? Like I just want a teacher to say, yes, you're doing this correct. That is the Sunday Basket class. Monique teaches the Sunday Basket class about six times a year. Sunday Basket class was against the free included Sunday Basket Club. Again, not really probably a fair competition. And unfortunately, the Sunday Basket class is not moving on to the next round. It will be the included Sunday Basket Club, which means next time we're here, the Sunday Basket Club, which is the support for the Sunday Basket, will be going head to head with the actual Sunday Basket. 
Next, let's talk about a couple of other Sunday Basket supports that we have in the Sunday Basket category. The next thing is the monthly versus the weekly tear pad. So the weekly tear pad is what I use each week. I look at my Google Calendar. I do have an online calendar. I look at my Google Calendar, but I write it out on paper every single week. This really helps me realize, am I going to be able to get where I need to go? Do I have everything that I need for the week that I have planned? And then I tear this off and I just take this with me all week and kind of make notes on it and look at it at the end of the week. The monthly tear pad actually has two different pages that you do each month. One is the actual calendar that you could fill out and put on your refrigerator, which I still do. Um, and then the second page walks you through all the bills you have that month, your monthly tasks that you do in your house, any special days, any notes. This was a tough competition, but the weekly tear pad handily beat the monthly tear pad. So the weekly tear pad will be moving on to the next round. Now, this was the nail biter in this category. The slash pockets versus the portable Sunday baskets. So the portable Sunday baskets allow you to take your, your productivity on the go. We mentioned in the last video how you could perfectly fit a binder inside of your portable Sunday basket. You could take a few slash pockets out of your Sunday basket or work box, carry them back and forth. I personally use about three or four of these each week. I have one for home, one for work, one for my school stuff, and one for a project I have going on right now. Like, I'm a bag lady. I'm definitely a bag lady. But some of you, as you were voting, you said, yes, but if we don't have the slash pockets, it really doesn't matter what kind of bag we have. Like the slash pockets are the things that really help us figure out what we need to do, externalize our thoughts and keep them organized in slash pockets. So for that reason, I am sorry, I'm glad all of you guys came out to support your fellow sisters because the portable Sunday basket her pains me to say, will not be moving on to the next round. It will be the slash pockets, which means that the slash pockets will be going head to head with the weekly tear pad. I wonder who's going to win that competition. All right, we're going to go back here. We're going to go to our home organization category. As I mentioned, we all have Swiss cheese organizing. Swiss cheese organizing is this. I did not explain it very well in the last video, so I'm going to explain it right now. Woo! It is spring. <clears throat> you're going to have a nice spring day, and you are going to feel that spring energy, and you're going to say, yes, I am going to take back this house, and you are going to run, and you're going to clean a little bit in the kitchen, a little bit in the garage, and you're going to grab a couple things out of your closet, and you're going to be exhausting by the end of the weekend, and you're going to have donated some things, and your refrigerator is going to look great, and you're going to be like, oh, I did such a great job. I feel so great. There's more to do, but I feel a little bit lighter, so I think I'm good. The problem with Swiss cheese organizing is you're organizing all these different areas of your house, but not one area all the way. So you're never all the way done. So every time you get a burst of spring energy, every time you get an extra day off of work or school, you then dive into get organized, but you're never all the way organized. So there is a way to get all the way organized, and it is to start like you were a child and do your bedroom, bathroom, and closet, and then move on to your closet and that or your kitchen. And that's what we do in Jumpstart. We give you these little tiny uh, parts of the Productive Home Solution. You can organize your bedroom, bathroom, and closet, or you can organize your kitchen, you could organize either one, and these are little six-week sprints. They are part of the Productive Home Solution, so you don't want to get both. Like, if you're going to get the Productive Home Solution, you don't need Jumpstart because it's included. But some people don't have a storage room or garage, or they don't want to get all the way organized, so they only really need the Jumpstart. If you do both Jumpstarts, you'll be 80% organized. Like, 80% of the spaces you use on a regular basis will be all the way organized, so it may be enough for you. We are going to be rerunning the Swiss cheese masterclass from December, which really explains this further. So if this interests you, go ahead and email customer service and we'll send you the link right now. But um, Swiss cheese organizing is different than getting all the way organized. The Productive Home Solution has been around before any of these physical products. It used to be called 40 Weeks, One Whole House. Then it was called the 100-Day Home Organization Program. Then it was called All Access. I'm a teacher. <laughs> I know how to teach. I might just kind of keep changing what I call things. But the Productive Home Solution is how to organize every single space in your house like a kindergarten teacher would so that you know where to put things back. And the Productive Home Solution 
beat out Jumpstart, which makes sense because Jumpstart is part of the Productive Home Solution. So the Productive Home Solution will be moving on to the next round. Next in that category, we have a couple of sleepy products, let's say. Like not everybody really even knows that these products exist or what these products are. The first one is the Saving Your Story photo program. I used to be a Creative Memories consultant for 17 years. I made over 300 albums. And I teach you how to take your actual physical photos, organize them, and if you want to, put them into scrapbooks. It's not a digital organizing program. It is, I digitally show you how to organize physical product uh, photos, but not how to organize digital photos. I don't talk about this very much. My sister actually is the one that's like, we're doing your, the way you do photo albums, Lisa, is different than everybody else. You have got to explain it. I'm like, okay. So it's in the shop, thanks to Emily Kelly. That is why it is in the shop. The other product that this is going up against is another thing that's totally unique to Lisa Woodruff, and that is the Embrace conference, which I told you about with the Embrace Sunday Basket. The Embrace conference I did live for five years. It'll come back in 2026 live again. It's a combination of a retreat, a professional development conference, a uh, self-improvement seminar. Like It's just like all those things rolled into one. It's a two-day musical to guide you through giving you permission to do what you are uniquely created to do and figure out what the heck that is. Like, what am I uniquely created to do? I don't know. People will say to me, darn you, Lisa. I did the productive home solution. Now my house is organized. That was like my never ending project. Now I'm at home. I don't have a never ending project. And I don't know what I was uniquely created to do. How do I know what I'm uniquely created to do? The Embrace program really um, walks you through a two day experience on demand where you could do that and you have a little gift in there. Now, because this is your uniqueness and what I think everybody, like really, what I as a teacher want every to pull out of everyone, the Organized 365 mission is this. We give you the products and services in order to get your home all the way organized in a year so that you have more time to do what you're uniquely created to do. What you're uniquely, this is my passion, this is my mission, is that more people would know what they're uniquely created to do and have the time and capacity to actually go for it because we need your uniqueness in the world. But that's not what you voted for. You voted for the photo program. My sister was right. Oh my gosh, I'll never live this down. So you voted for the photo program. So the photo program next week is going to be going head to head with the Productive Home Solution. I don't know, that's the first upset. That was a huge upset to me. I, I couldn't believe that one. Okay, next we have my self-published books versus the book club. So each uh, quarter, I do a different book club. This just went live in the shop this morning. The next book club that we're doing is The Mindset of Organization. It's the first book that I wrote. This is a book I wrote because as a professional organizer and just generally lover of gigantic families, uh, I noticed that how you organize your house changes in different decades and in different phases of life and the way you organize is impacted on what generation you are a part of. And I put those thoughts in this book. These, these are all self-published books, you guys. Like I've had them edited, but there, there's no publisher behind these. So, um, you know, they're like printed podcasts almost. So these books have been published 2016, 2017, and 2022. And the book clubs just started a couple quarters ago, and we're going to go through all four of my books every quarter for I don't know how long. The book club did not win over the books. And I understand that, like, I'm a book lover. My biggest decluttering regret is decluttering my bookshelves and getting down to almost no books. Now all I do is buy books to try to replace books that I had. And for me, I highlight all of my books. So I really like to keep the books because I go back and I just read the highlighted areas. So these three self-published books will be going up next week against the winner of our next round, which is Planning Day, Home Planning Day versus Planning Day Prep. Again, not really a fair comparison. If you're not going to do planning day, what are you prepping for, right? And that's kind of what you guys said in your voting. Like, you have to have planning day before you can have prep. So for that reason, planning day beat out over planning day prep.
planning day prep for the home happens on the Thursday before planning day. We go through our Sunday basket. We look at our calendar for the next 120 days, and we really deep dive into any information we may need to be able to make a better informed decision about what we're going to do for planning day. So next round on Friday, planning day, we'll be going up against the organized 365 self-published books. Let's move on to the second half of our bracket. We're gonna go over here on this side. We're gonna start with work. Now, teachers need some love. Can we all agree, teachers need some love? Today, we just launched the Wednesday podcast back. We've, the Wednesday podcast has been on hiatus. Came back today. Jamie, the teacher over at Lawrenceburg Middle School, is on the Wednesday podcast for nine episodes, you guys. You're going to love Jamie. And she's really talking about, you know, having been a teacher, a principal, having her superintendent's license, running this pilot, how it supported her school, what she thinks that teachers need today, and where teachers are struggling. We've got our happy apple here. I just went live in the education workbox group last night and talked to teachers about how excited I am for their summer. We're giving all teachers who have the teacher workbox the camp for free this summer and in the future. So when you have a teacher workbox, you now have the support of free camp for teachers in the summer. Get your teacher workbox organized in the summer because we know you're not going to be able to get that done during the school year. And we're bringing back the teacher workbox club starting after Labor Day. The teachers are so excited. And like I said, all the invisible work the teachers do that are supported by this administrative teacher workbox are here cheering her on like, yay, well, you made it. You made it into productivity madness. We're so proud of you, teachers. We're so proud of you, teacher workbox. However... The Business Friday Workbox is like business. It's all about business. You know, we can live together, right? Business, you have kids, you're sending them to school, right? We've got teachers, they're teaching the kids. Teachers, you need businesses to make money to fund the schools, right? So this is everybody needs everyone. But you voted, and you voted for the Friday Workbox. So the Friday Workbox is going to go on to the next round. Teachers... There is so much that we are adding to the teacher workbox this year, have added to the teacher workbox this year. It is my hope that the Wednesday focus of the teacher workbox, and then we're going to pull that off into its own podcast, will really amplify the need of caring for teachers as they care for students. It's not a big lift to get teachers some administrative support so they could do what they're uniquely created to do, which is to teach our students. So for that reason, Friday Workbox is moving on. Next, speaking of those students. So those students start out as kids. And in our kids program, we have five different sections in the kids program. It's, it's all digital. So there's a section with, with um, classes for parents, teaching you how to get organized for your children birth to age five, teaching you how to teach your kids about organization. Then there's a whole category about organizing for littles. And organizing for littles is learning that your bedroom is a mini apartment and it is your space and you have ownership over it and you can um, organize it in different zones. And we teach about organizing clothes and teach about organizing school supplies and passion projects and extracurricular activities and uh, hobby bags. And then we have a Saturday and a Sunday slash pocket. On Saturday, there's a checklist and you walk through cleaning and organizing your bedroom, just like you did as a kid if you were taught this. And if you weren't taught this, I've had many people who have the kids program and have the Productive Home Solution and they're like, the Productive Home Solution for adults is great. However, if you did not learn how to organize as a child, if you watch the children's videos as an adult, everything clicks so much faster because it's the foundation of what you need to organize as an adult. So on Saturdays, cleaning your bedroom means this. One, you get rid of any trash. Two, you take your laundry down and or start your laundry. Three, you put everything back where it needs to go. So often when we say to kids, go clean your room, we mean clean and organize. It's two completely different skills. Organization of a bedroom, a child's bedroom, is going to take, I don't know, six, eight weeks at least. One of my kids, it took me six months 
of every single weekend going in there until we really had what she wanted in her bedroom and she could maintain that space. Organization is about everything having a place to go and you remember where it goes and you put it there, at least on a regular basis, which for kids is weekly. I think for all of us, it should be weekly. We should clean our houses, organize our houses every week. If you put everything back where it needs to go once a week, it's so much easier to clean and maintain that room. Then you clean, and in the kids' program, I show you how to change a bed, how to vacuum a room, how to dust, like all of those actual physical cleaning things. Then on Sunday, in the kids' program, and this is something I haven't heard anywhere else, but this is what I do, and this is what I did with my kids, is they take their backpack and they empty it out, just like you take your Sunday basket and empty it out. They go through and they plan their week, just like we plan our week on the weekly planning sheet. Inside the kids' program, there's a kids' weekly planning sheet, and they plan... Do I have any after school activities? Do I have to remember to take anything special this week? Do I have any quizzes or tests coming up? Do I need to plan any of my projects? They get all their homework done. They give their parents anything that needs to go in the Sunday basket. I mean, this is such a complete comprehensive program. I was talking to the team about it the other day. And we we're talking about like, okay, well, if an adult is starting to get organized, they get a Sunday basket, they get the productive home solution. And Tanya said they really need the kids program. I was like, but they're adults. If they don't have kids, they're not going to want the kids program. She said, I know, but there's just so much in there that you don't realize until you start watching the videos and it's applicable for adults too. And she said, Lisa, you don't baby talk anybody. So it doesn't matter if you're an adult watching a kids program. The way I explain how to know which clothes you like in five different videos in the kids program will help any adult. But unfortunately, the kids program did not win this round. The launch program won this round. The launch program is the program that builds from the kids program and bridges the kids program and the adult productive home solution program. Inside of the launch program, you get a Sunday basket with one set of 1.0s. You don't get all the extra slash pockets that we have in the complete Sunday basket. You don't get the Sunday basket club, but you do get this box and these slash pockets because when you're 16 to 25, you're moving from living out of a backpack, going to grade school, middle school, high school, to you know, going to a dorm, living in a condo, living in an apartment, getting mail, things like that. You need an actual traditional Sunday basket and just to do a few of the basic things every single week. In addition to that and the videos that you get in the course, you get a binder that is a combination of three of the four binders we have up there. So a little bit of medical information, a little bit of financial information, and a little bit of house information really designed for renters instead of owners. And the workbook comes with that as well. So there's a lot of physical product that comes along with the launch program. So launch is moving on. The launch program, whoo, that's going to be, you're, you're, in, you're in for a fight there, launch program. You're up against the business Friday workbox. Good luck. That's all I say. Good luck to that one. <clears throat> Next, back to business. In business, especially if you are a solopreneur, entrepreneur, manager, there are two things that you are going to be doing. Maybe not as much manager, but definitely solopreneur, CEO, entrepreneur, business owner. Two things. One, you need to keep track of your income and expenses legally, like, like it's the law. And speaking as a fellow visionary CEO, founder, we don't like to. <laughs> that is way too many details. It's way too boring. Like we really don't want to do that. Uh, but you know, our accountants and the law and the government says that you need to. So the income and expense binder is what I used in my direct sales company and in the beginning of Organize 365 to organize all of those receipts and keep track of the fact of if I was profitable or not. What I found in my direct sales business was that many people were not keeping track of this until it came tax time. And because you only count money going in, not money going out, everyone thought they were profitable, but at the end of the year when they turned in everything for taxes, they actually found out they were running their business at a loss. And many, 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 many direct sales companies and companies in general do that. You have to keep track of the expenses as much as you keep track of the income. Like you really have to keep an eye on all of your expenses and this is just a really easy way to do this. Once you start using an income and expense binder and you have a place to put all of those receipts and you have a system for doing that every month, 
it really reduces your anxiety as a business owner because you don't have to worry about what's going to happen in February or March or how much money you're going to owe the IRS. You know as you go along. Now this is up against the meeting mastermind. So Steph and I started the meeting mastermind a year ago, 18 months ago. I don't know. Time goes so fast. So I had this idea. Inside of Organize 365, I use Google Docs and a couple of other things in order to get our meetings to flow well, to hold people accountable without having to you know, verbally hold people accountable in meetings or chase people down like it's all done in this Google Doc. It has eliminated 90% of the email we have inside of our company and all of our projects move forward so much faster in this different system that I have for doing meetings. So Steph and I did this live twice together kept all of those recordings. Those are now in the dashboard for those of you that are in the meeting mastermind. New people join the meeting mastermind twice a year and they run live groups with Steph to discuss the videos that were already on there, just like every other organized 365 product. Once you join it, you're in it. So every time we join, run it live, you get to go through it again, again live. So the income and expense binder versus the meeting mastermind. The income and expense binder one. Now I'll tell you what, I am happy about that for one reason. This is so essential. No one wants to do taxes. I don't even think accountants want to do taxes, to be honest with you. Like nobody wants to do it, but this is the thing that will keep your business solvent so you can continue to do what you are uniquely created to do. Once you have this as a system though, and you are a profitable company, you are going to grow. And as you grow, the complexity of dealing with people, your customers, your team members that are on your team, the contractors that you deal with, that is such a huge responsibility, opportunity, and expense. And the meeting mastermind really helps you maximize all of those things so that you can move forward faster. All right, last category in this section of the productivity madness is like we had in the home. In the home, we have planning day and we have prep. For workbox, we have planning day and then we have implementation. This is a little bit different. So for home planning, we have a 17 week cycle and then we prep on Thursday, plan on Sunday and out you go again. Like you're running a household, like the laundry and dishes will not wait. The dog wants to be fed. Like there is no time for us to just, oh, it takes so much time to plan. No, we gotta get it all done in one weekend. However, business, as we saw, as business beat out the school work box, business has been around for like ever. Business is not going anywhere. The economy runs on businesses running and planning inside of businesses is nothing new. Like there are whole companies that just help businesses plan. Businesses know they need to plan. They need to have a plan. They need to do quarterly planning. We as workers all need to plan also. Like it's not just business owners that need to plan, it's everyone. You are a worker, you should plan, you should have goals for your contribution to whatever company that you're a part of. That is our planning day. It happens the ninth week of the quarter. I know, it seems odd. However, planning has to happen before implementation. So we plan at the beginning of the third month of the quarter to give ourselves a whole month to think about, okay, this is what I think I'm gonna do starting April 1st. I'm gonna plan this the beginning of March. Then once I decide what I wanna do as the business owner, I need to go get buy-in from my team. Do they think that this is a realistic plan? I also then do all my quarterly conversations during that time, like how's it going? You know, Where can we improve? Where can you improve? How can we partner better together? Are there any other areas that we need to improve in the next quarter that I'm not aware of that you need to let me know about? Then I'm like, okay, after I take all of that information in, I do implementation day and we're doing it this Friday. So implementation day is when I say, all right, this is what I think we're gonna do. We've allocated the money, the team has buy-in, we've gotten everything on our calendar. Now I'm gonna make all of my boxes reflect the goals that I set in my planner. So you start with one Friday work box. I have six, let's not worry about that. But as your capacity grows, as your impact grows, the people and the processes and the information behind will also grow and you need to set aside time to maintain that. But implementation day did not win over planning day because if you don't plan, what are you gonna implement, right? So once again, planning day won over implementation day. All right, we're going into our last category and this is paper. So I published a book in 2020, I know, not the best time, let's move on from that, called The Paper Solution. 
And in the paper solution, it talks about how to set up a Sunday basket and how to set up the binders that we're about to have in competition, all these different binders. It is the paper that we have in our household. As a matter of fact, I brought a representation. This. Don't. You, 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 know, you know you have this box. You know you have lots of these boxes, right? Hanging file folders, they didn't work. Mail coming in that you didn't ask for. You know, emails, school papers, coupons, uh, things that need to be fixed around the house, like all, all kinds of paper. I call it paper. Recently, I've been starting to call it information management because the truth is you don't have a lot of medical paper. All your medical information is in your head. You don't have a lot of financial paper. You have some, but a lot of it is on your computer. And this, how do we manage physical paper, mental information, digital assets in a way that we can really communicate better with that? That is what the paper solution solves the problem for. And if you're the kind of person where you can read a book and you can implement from a book, you can create a lot of this just by reading the book and doing it yourself. So that is the paper solution. Going against the paper solution is the certification. So I am a teacher. I've told you this numerous times. What I know as a teacher is we all learn differently. We all learn differently, just like Monique runs the Sunday Basket um, class, and Monique and, and Michelle run the Sunday Basket club, and we've got Tanya running the Productive Home Solution club. Like We provide these communities and these clubs in order to motivate you and encourage you and inspire you and hold you accountable and answer your questions so that you can achieve the organization that you desire. Sometimes you need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one help. Like, I want you to actually look at my stuff one-on-one -on -one or in a small group and tell me that I'm doing the right thing. Double check me, hold me more accountable. And that's what the certified organizers do. They're all over the United States. They have their own clubs. They have their own in-person workshops. They are amazing. However, they did not win against the paper solution. If you want to find a certified organizer, just go to the Organize 365 website, scroll all the way to the bottom. There's this big pink button that says find an organizer near me. They would love to get help you. Okay, inside of the paper solution, we have five binders. The first two that we're going to talk about are the household operations and the household reference. The household reference binder and these are color coded to match the Sunday basket. It's like granimals around here. All these colors actually mean something. So as you're watching, you're like, ooh, uh, this, these are different. The binders used to be white and now they're all solid colored. Partly that's a supply chain and manufacturing issue. I wanted to keep them the way they were, you know, with this uh, clear covering. That's not how binders are made anymore, just so you know. Household, you're, running your household is two things. Blue is for people, purple is for projects. Blue is for your family, purple is for your house. If there's nothing else you take away from this Productivity Madness video, understanding that you, as the head of your household or the household manager, are actually doing two completely different things inside of your household. You're taking care of the actual physical house that you're a part of, meaning the maintenance, if you own the property, then you need to maintain, you know, like anything that you wouldn't call the landlord about. But even if you rent the property, you're probably in charge of your own washer, dryer, refrigerator, you know, any of those things that are hardwired to the house. Things that if you sold the house or if you moved would stay with the house. That is your household reference binder. This is the first binder I ever had as a household manager. As a matter of fact, my mom made it for me for my wedding. And she gave it to me. She called it something different, and it didn't have nearly as much information as I have in here. But it was something like that, like you're going to need to keep track of all of this stuff. And so she gave me that binder. So I've been using a binder like this for 30 years. The household operations binder is for your family. It's all about you. Like everything in here is going to go to the next house or the next dwelling that you're going to live in. This is your pets, your vacations, your holidays, your meal planning, your cleaning, everything that you've... Uh, taken off of Pinterest and all the printables that you download and all the different checklists. This is running your family and being the teacher and the happy homemaker of your family. And this is actually taking care of the physical dwelling that you live in. I can't believe it. The operations binder beat the household reference binder. This is the biggest upset I have seen. Like just based on sales, this is not the winner. 
But when you guys were voting, you're like, yep, we need the household operations binder. We need to know, like, when was the last time the pets got their flea and tick medicine? Where's my travel checklist? Where are my holiday checklist? And I think maybe the household operations binder won this year over the household reference because we added a planning day to the holiday blitz. So the holiday blitz is a big free blitz that we do every fall where we help you organize Thanksgiving, your December holidays of choice, New Year's, really that last six weeks of the year so that you can enjoy the holidays just like everyone else enjoys the holidays. And we put all of that in the household operations binder. We've been talking a lot more about the household operations binder inside of the productive home solution. And when I did the prep day for, um, for the home planning day, I talked a lot about the operations binder. So you guys are really starting to use this more, which is great. Again, there are no winners, there are no losers, but this is the binder that's going on to the next round. So the, holiday, the reference binder will not. The next two binders, I mean, I don't know how you pick. There's the medical binder and there's the financial binder. Again, each of these binders does something differently. They, I am not a minimalist. Obviously, I'm going to look around. But I'm not a maximalist either. I'm like a medium. I would say to Greg, we have a medium family. We have two kids. We have a medium-sized dog. We both wear medium-sized clothing. Like We're just medium-sized cars. We live in the actual average American house. Our house is 2,400 square feet. That's the average American. Like, we're just average. Like, we're just medium. We're just average. Um, so I'm not a minimalist. But these are four different kinds of information that you need to have. And medical information and financial information is completely different. And as these were created, these were what I needed when I was caring for my father. I needed a binder that would get me started and give me a place to record all of the information I needed as I was his power of health care. And I also needed a, a Mad Libs for Adults financial binder to go find all of the information that was not in his file cabinet. In his file cabinet were car catalogs and golf scores. That did not help me at all. I couldn't get into his computer. I had the names of all of his lawyers, but lawyers don't have the information about your day-to-day -day finances. They don't have the information about the sale of a house that uh, my family had owned for 45 years. Like They just don't have a lot of the information that you actually need as someone who's power of attorney or settling an estate. You need to have a 401k. You need to have beneficiaries on your life insurance and all of those things. Those, those are essential. Those issues are handled within days or weeks of someone passing. Settling an estate takes six to 18 months. That's the easy part. The day-to-dayness of someone's life and figuring out how to end that with um, dignity, that is something that there is no playbook for. So that's what the financial binders for. Now these obviously work like today. I have these for myself today and I'm not settling my own estate, but that's where, that's where the origination of these came from is they were great for you while you were living, but they also really help those who have to step in for you when you need support. The interesting thing about the medical binder, and I already talked about this in the last video, is that we are in a digital society, so you can get digital access to information inside your my chart. However, different my charts apply to different people. I was, I was just at my doctor this week, my OBGYN, and she asked me about my annual checkup, if you know what I mean. And I was like, well, I've had my regular doctor doing that because I haven't had an OBGYN because I never got pregnant. I never had kids. So what does it matter? And she said, and I told her who my doctor was, and she said, oh, yeah, he's not on the system. So she went out and she could find my mammogram and she could find all these other things, but she could find nothing about my medical record. It's 2024. Uh, my medical is being covered under a medical plan. I'm in a network that this doctor is in a network of, and she cannot get my medical records from that doctor because he doesn't have them digitized. He comes into my office when I'm there. He comes into the, the office with me and types everything on a computer. So they are digitized in his office, but he has not shared that link to the portal where everybody has access to my medical record. That's a problem. And there are lots of people that are like that. So when you need to advocate for someone or when you yourself are sick, you don't remember things. Like I'm allergic to codeine and penicillin. Please do not give those to me. I will not die. I will either throw up every hour on the hour or I will have hives. I'll live, but I will not be a very happy person. When I'm sick, I don't remember those things, right? 
So I need my husband to know those things. Does he remember those things? Do I know those things for him? So that is the medical binder. Again, it's not really a fair competition, but the financial binder is the binder that will be going head to head with the operations binder. Oh my gosh, that is going to be quite the game. No, that's not true. Sorry, that's not true. The operations binder is going head to head with the book. The financial binder will be going with the winner of our very last competition. So once again, I'm bringing back, you have this box, right? I have this box. Our paper box versus our Warrior Mama binder. Now the Warrior Mama binder is also in the paper solution. This binder is also in the paper solution. Book, it's not part of the paper solution package because this is a unique binder. This binder supports you when you are um, Organizing and advocating for children under the age of 18 who qualify for individualized educational plans. So if you know what that is, then this is the binder you need. If you don't, that is so amazing. I'm so happy for you. So a lot of kids need some extra support at school and they need their parents or guardians to be advocates that they get the help that they need. So inside of this binder, it's almost like um, an ebook and a binder all in one. I have helped so many people get their children the individualized education plan that they need at school and or advocate for and get the medical assistance that they need for their children. It is so individualized. The, the plan is so individualized, but also achieving that support for your kids is so individualized. However, I realized over time there were some things that I said every single time I met with a friend or I met with someone new who had been referred to me. And I don't do this anymore. It's been years since I do this, but I wrote it all down in this binder so you can get it in this binder. And there are certain things you say and how you say them and, um, that will get you more services that, will, that are legal and will get different people acting on your behalf that's all written inside of this binder, as well as organizing all that information. The uniqueness of having kids that need individualized education plans is that when you are a child under the age of 18, the school and the medical society really work together and partner in order to meet the needs of that child. So like, let's say you have an ADHD diagnosis. Well, there are educational ramifications of ADHD and there are medical ramifications of ADHD. ADHD is a medical diagnosis. You must have a doctor make that diagnosis. Um, there are supplements, there are medications, there are um, behavioral management things that all can support on the medical side. There are modifications, accommodations, behavioral things that can all help on the education side. And there's a lot of information that flows back and forth between medical and education. Once you're an adult, that doesn't really happen. Like your employer doesn't ask for your medical information and there's kind of like a separation of church and state at that point. But when you're a child, one really informs the other so we put it all in one binder. The Warrior Mama binder is in competition with the paper organizing retreat. So the paper organizing retreat, kind of like Embrace, something I just had in my head. I told you I was Creative Memories consultant. And so I would have these workshops once a month where people would come in my basement, they'd bring all of their photos, they'd sort their photos and they'd make photo albums. And as I was starting my professional organization business and organizing people's homes in Cincinnati, which I loved, uh, I would love going in and organizing their kitchen and organizing all their physical spaces. But I had two problems. One, people wouldn't let me in their house morning, noon, and night. And two, um, when I would organize paper at people's houses, I would just be like sitting on the floor and just sorting all this paper. It would take so much time. And I didn't necessarily have um, as much space as I wanted to organize their paper. So as an in-home professional organizer, I started taking banker's boxes, loading them full of paper and saying, okay, I'm gonna organize your basement. I'm gonna box up all the paper. I would charge them $250 per box. I'd put all the boxes in my car. I'd bring them to my house and I started sorting them all over my house. At one point, my entire basement was full of paper and I had employees down there. We were organizing all kinds of people's paper in the basement. And because I just charged $250 per box, I didn't have to track my time or any of that, and people knew what they were paying. Fast forward into Organize 365, and I stopped doing in-home organizing in Cincinnati. I was like, you know, I'm no longer doing in-home organizing. The Productive Home Solution helps organize the physical spaces in your house, but paper is portable. Paper is portable. And if you put it in a box, 
you can bring it to a paper organizing retreat and you can sort it with professional organizers with on-site shredding with music and snacks and motivation and and that's what we do that's what i do here in cincinnati we have three per year that's what the certified organizers do all year long virtual and in person we had someone i live in cincinnati ohio we had someone drive an rv from canada full of paper people will drive 18 hours 14 hours with their minivans and their cars loaded down and full of paper to cincinnati to these paper organizing retreats i say that because not everyone is going to do it but if you want to do it you are not alone it is so much fun we definitely would love to have you come we have the next one is in june and we also have one in september you can see those on our website the paper organizing retreat beat the warrior mama binder so the paper organizing retreat is going to go on to the next round and it is going to be against the financial binder and that's it that's where we are at the end of this round we've got our next 16. so now you filled out your bracket online but i need you to go vote i need you now to go back to that same page and vote again now that you know who the winners are you're going to get to vote and you're voting based on the winners not based on your very first people so you're going to vote is it the sunday basket the complete sunday basket or the sunday basket club is it the weekly tear pad or is it the slash pockets? Is it the productive home solution or is it the photo program? Is it the organizing books that I self-published or is it home planning day? Is it the Friday work box or is it the launch program? Is it gonna be income and expense binder or the work planning day? Is it going to be the paper solution book or the operations binder, the financial binder or the paper organizer retreat? You get to vote, you get to decide and I will be back here live on Friday. Bye, everyone.